Hello. Wherever you are today, whatever you are doing, thank you for joining me for these reflections from Liberton Kirk. Over the last couple of weeks, I wonder if some of us have gained a new appreciation of what it means to live in a city built on hills. I know John, our minister, is used to cycling up Kirk Bray on a regular basis, but we aren't all as committed or as fit as that. Instead of jumping in the car, many people are setting out on foot, getting their daily exercise, and in the process, getting to know the local area a little bit better. From my garden here in Liberton, I can see Arthur's Seat, the castle, the observatory, and also the Braid Hills. One of the real pleasures of this strange time has been meeting friends from church and from the community as we are out walking on the braids and being able to greet each other from a safe distance, of course. The church building may be closed at the moment, but there is still a real sense of community, encouraged not just by seeing each other, but by the wonders of technology, by letters, phone calls, and by knowing that we are praying for each other. Today, I have chosen to share one of the Psalms with you. In Psalm 121, the writer thinks about where we can turn to when we are in need of help. If I lift up my eyes to the hills, where shall I find help? My help comes only from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot stumble. He who guards you will not sleep. The guardian of Israel never slumbers, never sleeps. The Lord is your guardian, your protector at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard you as you come and go, now and forevermore. Psalm 121 is one of the so-called Songs of Ascents. It is believed they were sung by pilgrims making their way up the hill to the great temple of the Jewish people in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival. The picture that comes into my mind when I think about it is strongly influenced by the TV images we saw a couple of weeks ago of people streaming to the top of Snowdonia in spite of having been told to stay at home. Something draws us to the high places to lift our eyes to the hills. For the pilgrims travelling to Jerusalem, it is easy to imagine the words of the psalm being a real source of inspiration. You are exhausted after being on the road for day after day, trudging along dusty tracks, and at last, finally, your destination is in sight. Joining in the singing of the inspiring words is what is going to get you there, what is going to carry you up the last few steps to the presence of God in the temple. Now, I'm going to have to admit to not really being one myself, but keen walkers often talk about feeling the presence of God when they go up into the hills. Something about the splendour of the Scottish mountains makes it easy to believe in God as the maker of heaven and earth. Looking up to the high peaks helps us to grasp something of the wonder of our Heavenly Father. However, the mountains can be dangerous, risky places as well. What is the psalmist actually seeing when he raises his eyes to the hills? Is it the wonder of God? Or is it some kind of threat? Perhaps a wild animal waiting to pounce? Or an army just coming over the peak, ready to attack? 
We don't really know. But what we do know from the words of the psalm is that the Lord is there. The Lord as our only helper, guardian and protector. In the midst of danger, we are reminded that God is there for us. My help comes only from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot stumble. He who guards you will not sleep. Whatever situation we find ourselves in, we can have faith that God is beside us every step of the way. In a few days, we will be celebrating Easter. As we progress through Holy Week, we move from the crowds of Palm Sunday, rejoicing and praising Jesus as Messiah, to the loneliness of the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prays alone and his death on the cross, and then to his rising again to be with us forever. Through all these experiences, God is there with Jesus. Whether we are part of a huge crowd or sitting quietly on our own, God is with us also. At a time when many of us are spending more time alone than we might like, it is a real comfort to know that. So, if you see me up on the Braid Hills over the next few weeks, Remember to give me a wave, and who knows, by the time we're allowed out again, I might even be able to call myself a keen walker. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are with us always, at our right hand, as our friend and our protector. As your body, the church, help us to reach out to our neighbours, so they know they are loved and valued by you. And finally, we ask your blessing on us all today and give thanks that you will guard us as we come and go, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>